Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas. And our brand new study, a brand new study in a collection of essays on Jürgen Moltmann, edited by M. D. Meeks. The title is uh, Jürgen Moltmann and the Work of Hope, published in 2018. And uh, it is a collection of essays on Moltmann and his theology of hope. And uh, Meeks was his uh, right-hand man in America for many, many years. And now we have a collection of essays edited by Meeks. We're going to take a look at the very first, very short essay by Christopher Morse. It was only seven pages long, very, very short, on accounting for hope. So it's like an introductory, this given account of hope, of hope according to Moltmann. Let's begin with block one, an early criticism of Moltmann. The place of God's communion was considered to be ahead of us rather than beyond and within us. Moltmann posited the notion that God's communion was ahead of us. It was posited that the future is an actual mode of God's being. And because of that, transcendence and imminence had to be reinterpreted. And for Moltmann, we know what that meant. It meant positing the notion of imminent transcendence. It meant eventually positing the notion of imminent transcendence. So reinterpreting transcendence and imminence, God's future is an advent taking place. Not just actualization of potentiality, but future as Adventus, future as coming Advent, as Advent already taking place. But Moltmann used two terms for future in his volume. He also used futurum. So future as Adventus and futurum, the gospel of God's coming kingdom is what we address, and the future is coming kingdom as Adventus, but the coming kingdom is also Futurum. It is actualization of dunamis potentiality. It is energy actualization of dunamis potentiality as well. It is an emerging becoming. And it occurs and it becomes because the word creates new possibilities to be taken up by the believer, by the church. How exactly does that happen? How exactly is hope related to present experience? How does new possibility emerge? How does it emerge as tendency? And how is it actualized? That question remains a question to be answered. And then we're reminded that uh, shortly thereafter, after these criticisms, April 4, 1968, Martin Luther King is executed, killed, assassinated. But it's all about a question being posed in the theoretical block one. How is hope supposed to take up these created new possibilities of word. How does that unfold in a concrete way? That's the question that Christopher Morse poses at the end of the theoretical block one. Now let's take a look at the concrete block two. What does Moltmann mean by identity? What does he mean by agency. Under identity, the self defines its identity in face of the apocalyptic unveiling of God's promised future. In that moment of unveiling, we ask, when confronted by that unveiling of God's future kingdom, who am I? Who am I and who am I supposed to be eschatologically? 
Once we recognize the tendency of God's kingdom, how do we define the eschatological self? It cannot be that we must negate Christian exclusivity. That must be negated. But also we must negate this uh, postmodern pluralism. We don't take up either extreme, not exclusivity or pluralistic absorption. Both are to be negated. So back to answering that question, how is hope related to present experience? Now we look at agency or praxis. Praxis defined. Praxis, the Greek concept, means action and reflection within a particular concrete historical situation. In other words, we participate through action and reflection. In other words, we reflect in the midst of ministry because we're going to discover the work of word and spirit unfolding even more of future possibility and future aletheia truth. So it's action and reflection. One confronted by God's unveiling of the promised future of kingdom. So theoretically the question was asked in block one. How is hope related to present experience? The answer is given concretely in block two. It's related through the agency of praxis, action and reflection within a particular concrete historical situation in the presence of the unveiling of God's eschatological promised future. Therefore, our conclusion is to take up the believer's responsibility of praxis in block three. The believer's responsibility of praxis was initially missed by Americans in their first reading of the Theology of Hope. Moltmann stated this many times, but he said there was an overly optimistic, overly utopian interpretation of the Theology of Hope in America that needed to be corrected in his view. Praxis was missed. Praxis was missed by the uh, American interpretation of the theology of hope. Because our God is a God with a concrete future. Moltmann realized that the theology of hope needed a rereading in America through new lens, and that new lens was the book that he wrote entitled The Crucified God. Therefore, before Gustav Gutierrez, offered his theology of liberation. Before that was on the scene, Moltmann was already anticipating the emergence of liberation theology on his own. He anticipated it in the theology of hope, but Americans read over it and didn't recognize that emergence of praxis in the theology of hope. They were so enamored by a resurrection theology, they forgot that it was a resurrected, crucified, kenosis emptying Christ that was the one resurrected. Therefore, we learn from Christopher Morse's interpretation here that uh, Block 3, note 3b, agency and identity and transcendence and imminence are all discovered in the ministry of praxis and the return moment out of praxis. And that is, to use the words of uh, Christopher Morse, they are discovered in a logic of promise. Promise becomes the, the logic of promise becomes the hinge point of Moltmann's theology. That was from Morse's book, The Logic of Promise, in Moltmann's theology. But we must take 
in-depth look at this introduction essay. It is an introduction essay to the entire collection of essays. The theoretical question that is asked. If future is Adventus and Futurum, if it is the advent of the coming God, and if it is the energy actualization of dunamis potentiality also, and if the word opens up and creates new possibilities, how does this become concrete? How is hope concretely related to the present experience? The answer is that the word that creates new possibilities is the word of promise. The word of promise confronts the self. The self initially posits suppositions, draws dokeo suppositions. Then those dokeo suppositions are carried to communal dialogue, and in communal dialogue, dokeo suppositions are elevated and refined to aletheia truth concepts. To aletheia truth concepts. Aletheia truth concepts then are combined with the motivational base of the believer's heart being imprinted with the promise of Christ and that motivational base is coupled with the aletheia true concepts in order to form a samion sign model of hope. A samion sign model of hope. Now with that samion sign model of hope, we are instructed by Moltmann and by Morse that we do not remain in the abstract. We must become concrete with our theology. We must be co become concrete with our Samion sign model. Therefore we go from Dokeo to Aletheia to Samion and then to Praxis. We shape that Samion sign model into a practical logic of promise, a practical logic of promise, which means it becomes that internal externality through which we view the world, through which we minister in the world, through which we take up the new possibilities in the world that Moltmann described as tendencies of spirit. And a tendency of spirit describes the movement of spirit from dunamis to energia. Okay? Tendency of spirit means appearance of the eschatological kingdom as movement, potential movement, tendential movement from dunamis potentiality to energy actuality. We take up praxis to participate in that tendency of the logic of promise, which has an objective presence and a subjective posited presence from the believer. We have our posited presence that we carry with us in ministry. There's an objective presence of Adventus and Futurum as well. And those come together for the self to discover truth of kingdom, truth of Christian identity, of human identity, and the real meaning of transcendence and the real meaning of imminence. And as those truths are unfolded, huge return moment emerges. The self returns out of praxis back into the internal self and toward an, another deep tupas imprinting of the heart by the person and the promise of Jesus Christ. That imprinting of the heart by the person and the promise of Jesus Christ leads us back to the dialectical process again, the logic of promise again. But we'll stop there because right now we have an introductory essay. 
We have been asked, how is hope related to present experience? That's the theoretical block one. In the concrete block two, we're given the answer that agency is praxis. And in agency as praxis, we discover identity. And then we conclude with responsibility of praxis. The theoretical must become concrete. And that means that we will discover agency and identity and transcendence and imminence in the midst of missiology, in the midst of praxis ministry. That's going to wrap up this introductory essay by Christopher Morse. And we're going to pick up next lesson in essay number two.